<laughs> they've never performed in Hawaii. So the side order band consists of Del Beasley, mm. Chris Kamaka, um, Brian Tolentino, and Asa Young, four of my favorite uh, local musicians. And, you know, they were all big influences for me and, uh, and you know, just great mentors. And the first time I performed in Japan back in 1999 or 2000, I, would, I opened for them. Wow. I was their opening act. You know, and they were like rock stars up there, you know, and it's so funny because in Hawaii, like nobody knows the side order band because they don't have any albums right. out. Right. <laughs> but they were just childhood friends that grew up playing music together. And to my ears, when I hear them play, they're like the modern day uh, sons of Hawaii. You know, their sound is just amazing. And last year when I did my friend's concert, I invited them to come and play and the place went nuts. I mean, when they started singing. I mean, there was, I mean, the whole room got chicken skin. You know, it was like sure. one of those moments. And everybody's like, you know, because they all, everybody knows Del Beasley. Everybody knows Chris Kamaka. Everybody knows Brian Tolentino and Asa Young. You know, I mean, they, they've played with, with everybody. They've all had their own great solo careers. But, um, you know, and, uh, but uh, at the same time, you know, they're just, they've always just been too busy to record an album together until you came yeah, along. and uh, you know so I, I hope that they, they get in the studio and record something but um, but you know but they were they were just a huge influence for me and it was such an honor to collaborate with them you know I, I, I asked them you know and I, I was so hesitant you know because I'm like I don't know if they're gonna want to do something with me but I, I just asked them um, after we did the the friends concert last year i said hey would you guys you know i'm working on an album now would you guys want to do something together and they were like yeah of course and you know and i i just i couldn't believe it so we brought them into the studio and uh, and it was a song that i that i'd written you know it was kind of it's kind of like a country waltz tune <laughs> And, uh, and I, I sent it over to them. I think, well, what do you guys think of this? You know, and they came into the studio and they sang it just beautifully. You know, we, we uh, recorded it live. We just sat yeah, basically a in feel. a circle. We just basically sat in a circle and played it. And the reason we, we did it that way is because when they would rehearse together, they would basically go to uh, Chris Kamaka's house and they would sit in his living room in a circle. And that's how they would practice and jam in Kani Kapila. So I was like, well, so initially I was like, oh, man, let's record it at Chris's house, you know, the way that you guys rehearse. But we, we ended up doing it in the studio. and We just sat in a circle and we played. And, and, uh, and I think it's just, um, you know, you can, you can feel the, just their, their vibe and their chemistry, you know, when they play together because mm -hmm. they've, they've been playing together since they were kids, you know, so to, to, to feel that. And for me to actually be a part of that was... Um, was really special and, and it was an, an, an honor you know and that song um you know i i don't write a lot of songs with lyrics but every once <laughs> in a while i'll you know i'll i'll get inspired to try to write something and i mean i i don't i i'm definitely not a not a song writer you know like i don't write lyrics you know i just it's just a lot of times when i write songs you know I, to my ears i'm like oh it's so corny you know but um but uh, but I, I think I think this song, um, you know, there there was something about about this tune and the way that they sing it. You know, there's so much sincerity in it, and it's it's almost like you know we we wrote it together, and uh, and they and so I was I was it's one of my favorite tracks on the on the album because of because of them. Well, it sticks out. Uh, it's the soul track uh, to feature some vocals like that. Uh, yeah, and so it really has its own own presence on the record. And, and when you hear Chris and Dell sing together, I mean, it's just it's it's butter. I mean, it's magical. I'll be there. No, yeah, it is on the record. Um, yeah. What uh, was our moment? Uh, which one of these tunes do you like to play? Before I got to get a song out of here. What, well, what can you play from the record? That's oh, one yeah, of the solo you know, I, I mean, I, I can I can play a lot of songs from the record. Uh, well, I'll be there definitely. You know, uh, I'll be there. See, everyone. You know, depending on the on the age, right? People will, will say I'll be there was a Jackson Five song, right? Or right? A, a Mariah Carey. Song. But some people will say no, that's a Mariah Carey song, right? But for me, it's a very the first, Gordy song. No, the first time I heard. The first time I heard this song was uh, was Israel, Is, mm. Israel Kamaka Vivoli. He did a recording of this. Um, it was a, a medley of I'll Be There and Warren's song. And so when we were, when I was in high school, I mean, that was our jam. Like, we would put that on, you know, and, and he'd, you know. 
you know. And this is kind of how he sang it. You know, to this kind of groove. You know, um, and I remember like with my with my buddies and stuff. Whenever we go driving or we go hang out somewhere, man, mm -hmm. we'd be blasting that that album, you know, and 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 I'll and Iz was singing, I'll be there, and it would come on. And so for me, that that song, you know, um, was really uh, for me a tribute to Iz, you know, on on this track. And you know, like I was talking earlier about Peter Moon and uh, um, you know Otasan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I talked about Gabby, and you know, and Eddie Kamai was another one of my heroes. I mean, he was probably one of my favorite ukulele players. But, you know, they were they were all my influences and also is, you know, is was an amazing uke player. I mean, I remember the um, when I used to go watch them and listen to them at the Makaha Bash. Remember the Makaha Bash over at the Before Shell? Before my time. Kyle. Man, holy smokes. I mean, in fact, that was one of my favorite albums when he was still with the Makaha Sons and they were the Makaha Sons of Mihao. And they had that, you know, live at, at the, Maka, you know, at the at the Waikiki Shell and I mean, they did like uh, they did like Crosby, Stills and Nash, and of course they did all their traditional stuff. But um, but man, it was just his his uke playing was awesome when he played Hene Hene Kawaka. You listen to that ukulele solo on that track, it's just it's just awesome, man. He had this style and just a, just an incredible feel. And you wonder like, man, you know, because his hands were huge, but he <laughs> man, his playing was so clean. You know, but uh, yeah. So for me, you know, I'll be there was kind of a tribute to the. That's to cool to use games. somebody else's tune as a tribute too. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a neat way of tying different stuff yeah. together. All right, here's I'll be there.
<laughs> Shima Bukuro in our HPR Atherton Performing Arts Studio. And uh, thank you very much. Oh, thanks, That's a man. tasty one. Tasty. You. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of is the, um, it's on Travels. It's his, his new record. Um, part of what's helped get your name out there is certainly covering people's songs. Mm -hmm. um, it's helped get you a lot of exposure. Uh, record has a couple. We've talked about Lowrider. I'll be there. And uh, when you take a look at your uh, your Twitter feed, I guess it is, you can take it. You can see some of the adventures of Jake when he's out traveling around the world. <laughs> and some of those uh, include fun places you go to. Uh, Cavern Club is one that just sticks out in my mind. Oh. But it includes, on the note of the the songs, when we think about pop songs and songs of people that are that go beyond the island, so to speak, and and are in part of the larger contemporary thing. I see you jamming with Megadeth's uh, Marty Friedman. <laughs> I see Paul Gilbert. And I wanted to try to explore uh, that side of you, which I've never talked to you about before, mm -hmm. which I see you publicizing out there. And so I want to know the rock side of you, that side that I, I never hear about. Where did you first, you know, the, the earliest rock albums, the earliest rock things, uh, what were they? I guess it started with Van Halen. You know, Van Halen was probably my first introduction to, you know, sh guitar, you know, electric guitar shredding. How old were you? Ah, I must have been... I don't know, 11, 12 years old. How important was the rock and the formation of everything that you've done? I, you know, what I got out of rock and roll was just the energy and just how exciting it was. Like to me, watching a rock concert was like watching a, you know, football game or a basketball game. You know, that's the kind of enthusiasm you experience that that kind of music with. You know, it's very different from, you know, listening to, uh, you know. I mean, other genres of music, you know, it was a little bit more. I mean, the music, even though it was upbeat and could be fun, it was kind of like you would sit there and be like, oh, yeah, this is great, you know. But rock music and, like, metal, you know, you would watch that with the kind of intensity that you'd watch, like, you know, like a UFC or, you know, Pride or something, right, or a, or a boxing, like a Tyson Holyfield match, you know. I mean, that's that's the kind of intensity you would you would experience this music with. And I just thought it's so cool. You know, it's so cool because, I, I mean, as a kid, you know, I just thought, man, playing an instrument is, is just like playing a sport. How did you develop that relationship, though? It's different from being a kid watching the Megadeth videos, perhaps, on MTV <laughs> to being on stage. And, and, I, and I introduce it as a topic because I think it's, it shows the depth of who you are. You talk about travels. Mm -hmm. That illustrates a lot. And I think sometimes, you know, when I watch that, I'm like, wow, that's a whole side of him you don't really see. You know, mm -hmm. he, you on stage with Marty Friedman, yeah. you know, and he, you're doing acoustic, he's doing electric, and it's like the shred fest or the thing with mm -hmm. Paul Gilbert. And it just makes me wonder, um, you know, that side of you, uh, how often it comes out and how much it, it factors in you know, mm. to, to your work. Yeah, this was, um, there's, a, there's a track on the, on the new record uh, called Kavika. And, you know, I mentioned, right. I, we talked about this a little earlier. But there's a, you know, I wanted to stay true to the, uh, the Sunday Manoa version, you know. So there's, um, you know, so I, I, I pretty much play the melody straightforward. When it gets to the Peter Moon solo, you know, I, I transcribed it. No further, you know. And and one thing I want to say is, you know, there there's always this. There was this. There are two licks in Peter Moon's solo that that I never ever heard anyone else play, you know. And it's the part where he gets to, and this is a, you know, people always, you know, like I. All the other recordings that I've heard after Sunday Manoa, you know, we, including myself, we'd always simplify. Uh, they would play, you know, duh, duh, duh. right? But he would play. So, you know, I remember sitting with that and just, and just, you know, when I was, uh, you know, when I was working on the piece, I said, no, you know what? I got to learn it the, the right way. It's a speed exercise. And I sat with somewhere. it, right? So that, and then the other part is he does this, uh, this, uh, this run. He goes, uh, uh, and he plays this, but it's fast. <laughs> so when you hear it in time. you know to the regular solo so that song you know I wanted to be very true to the original 
uh, and when you listen to the to the record, you'll you'll hear that. But then at the end of the Peter Moon solo, that's where I kind of thought, you know what, I can kind of have some fun with it, right? And uh, and that's when kind of that rock side of me, I think, mm. that rock Emerges. influence clicked in a bit. And you know, so I I you know, we ended up reharmonizing the main riff, which is. Instead of that, we we changed the harmony around that line, so then it became. And then you'll hear this uh, almost like this Iron Maiden lead line that comes in. And I used a, I used a, um, I, I have a, a a car Rambler amp, you know, which is my favorite electric guitar amp. And uh, we put a car crash uh, uh, overdrive pedal in front of it that Milan had, and and it just gives this nasty distortion, you know. But I play this line, uh, uh, and right, and that's the line of, of the lick. But you, you know, I, I don't have my distortion pedal right, with me, obviously, here. right now. But um, but when you hear that, I mean. It really was a throwback for me to to listening to those like you know Iron Maiden records, you know like Rime of the Ancient Mariner, you know all that stuff, right? Because they would do these these crazy like lead lines, and then what they would do is they would double it, they would double the lines, and then they would they would add harmony, you know, a harmony line above it, and double that as well. So you'd have this really thick sound of like distorted guitars playing, but when it plays together, it's just amazing, right? So so powerful so that's what i did i took the i took the the lead line you know i took that line and just and then i took that same line but i played it an octave lower with the distortion Double it up like that. so when you hear it together just the the single line in unison it's a But now you gotta imagine the distortion over it. So you got this sustain and this thick, like heavy <laughs> guitar sound. And then what I did was after I laid that down, then I played the same thing, but a third above. So now I added. Right? And that's playing over, you know, that other part. And then of course I played it an octave lower again. I played a. So when you got four tracks Layering of distorted ukuleles all playing <laughs> octaves and playing this, you know, this third harmony above, it just sounds so thick. And it, and it, for me, it was like, dude, Iron Maiden, this is it. You know, and I thought, because that's, for me, kind of the evolution of the song is like going from the, the very traditional feel, you know, a very reminiscent of the Pahu drums, you know, uh, this kind of kahiko, you know. Very like you know pahu drum kahiko Aggressive. kind of uh, you know feel to it, but but then you know then getting to the, the the transitioning into the Peter Moon solo, and then now at the end of the Peter Moon solo, bringing in electric bass, bringing in a drummer, bringing in like you know heavy keys. Yeah, it builds. And then you know, and then this this electric ukulele <laughs> solo over the top. And to me, that's just like it's like okay, yeah, this is cool. You know, it's it's melt, it's bringing together the uh, the the traditional sound of the ukulele, but also the modern Influences sound of, yeah, your life. of the instrument. And I like uh, that. so you know, so that was so for me, Kavika really, um, really, uh, I, I think was was the track where I could kind of bring out that rock influence that you were talking about, you know, but, but I didn't want to overdo it right. with the distortion, you know, so I, I did that kind of Iron Maiden tribute. And then after that, you know, then it was back to the acoustic ukulele, but then playing it, approaching it, even though it's a clean acoustic uh, sound, not the distortion, playing it as if I were plugged into, you know, through a through overdrive pedal and everything and just kind of going for it, you know, like shredding and just trying to, you know, shred the notes and, Play, you know, so you'll you'll have things like this that you hear. 
you know, and it's like, you know, normally you would hear that like on electric guitar, you know, someone playing that kind of, you know, and it's, but, but playing it clean and acoustic, you know, was, I think you still, it still captured the energy of like a, like, you know, like, uh, like a, as if it were an electric guitar, but still, it's still clean and still the ukulele and still being true to the instrument. I didn't know that uh, Adrian Smith and Dave Murray had had such a <laughs> on you. To Tame a Land is one that you're playing actually reminded me of. That was another one. Of the, oh, yeah, remember yeah, that yeah. Jam oh, okay, yeah, from yeah. From Peace of Mind, actually. That's right, I, I yeah. didn't realize they were such an influence, but as you started talking, I was like, wow, I guess I can sort of hear that. Yeah. Um, uh, well, as, uh, as we go to wrap it up, my suggestion is I think you should do an all metal ukulele <laughs> you put iron man on there there could be a number say, it could sound pretty good uh, <laughs> it's a bit dude it might sell a whole lot of records and, oh man and then you'll owe me one for that one yeah uh, but that would be a uh, and your teen spirit you could put that on there you oh could, yeah I mean, you yeah. know there's a few you could do a couple you could mm-hmm. rhyme with the ancient mariner like 13 minute ukulele <laughs> jam of that i don't know how well that would sell but um yeah. Uh, do you want to do uh, one final tune and then I'll send you on your way? Yeah, sure. Is, sure. is that one a good one to do, or what would you like? Um, what, what would you like to play? Well, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll play Kavika since we talked so much about it. Yeah. And here I was thinking you did it for me. A little tribute to your favorite afternoon guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, That's uh, right. Kavika means David <laughs> in Hawaiian. Yeah. But it's great to have you here and doing this. Jake Shimabukuro. It's uh, HPR's Atherton Performing Arts Studio in Kavika. All right.
need the big pyro thing. Yeah. <laughs> It's Jake Shimabukuro, HPR, our uh, Atherton Performing Arts Studio. A real pleasure. Travels is the record, and uh, I always dig this, man. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you.